Hi everybody, could you use some good news? Well, let's start with this. A team of scientists from the University of Southern California, Massachusetts General Hospital, and Harvard Medical School has developed a technique for isolating and studying tumor cells that cause cancer to metastasize. The team, led by Min Yu, a stem cell researcher at USC, was able to isolate breast cancer cells in the bloodstreams of six patients. The cells were then grown and studied in a laboratory where researchers used them to identify mutations and test drugs in order to find the best possible treatment for a given patient. This technique, the details of which were published last week in the journal Science, if refined and put into common use, would allow doctors to not only track the progress of cancers more precisely, but also design more personalized therapies engineered to fight particular cancers in individual patients. Next up, a new study of how the brain functions could lead to better understanding and more effective treatments of severe mental illness. The study, recently published in the journal Neuron and led by Rutgers University Newark neuroscientist Michael Cole, observed the brains of subjects using fMRI and found that the brain's operations are the same whether active or at rest. Prior to this study, it was thought by some that the brain actually reorganizes itself for different tasks, which would greatly complicate the task of understanding the brain dysfunction underlying mental illnesses like bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Now that images taken of resting brains can be relied upon as also accurate to those same brains in a more active state, researchers can be more confident when identifying potential problem areas in the brains of mentally ill patients. For starters, Dr. Cole suggests examining the quality of connectivity between the prefrontal cortex and the rest of the brain. It goes without saying that this research is still at an early stage. Nonetheless, a new reason for optimism in the battle against mental illness. And finally, astronomers have found that rare astronomical events called ultra-long gamma-ray bursts may be able to provide us with insights into the ancient history of the universe, including what the first stars were like. Led by astronomers with Italy's National Institute for Astrophysics and using data from NASA's SWIFT spacecraft, a team of researchers studied an ultra-long gamma-ray burst that was detected in late September 2013. Gamma-ray bursts, or GRBs, are incredibly powerful explosions that occur during the collapse of massive stars at the end of their lives, and they typically last from only a few seconds to a couple of minutes. The GRB monitored last September, designated GRB 130925A, lasted nearly two hours. The most likely sources of ultra-long GRBs are blue supergiants, stars 20 times as massive as our Sun that contain mostly hydrogen and helium with only tiny amounts of heavier elements. This makes them excellent models for the first stars to form in our universe, classified by astronomers as Population 3 stars. The more researchers learn from stars like the one that produced GRB 130925A, the better the chances that they will one day be able to find and study actual Population 3 stars, which so far have never been directly identified. Metastasizing cancer cells are found and studied. A new understanding of how the brain works could help improve the treatment of severe mental illness. And astronomers use a dying star first detected last year to learn more about the universe's first stars. That's the good news. Cheer up, you're done.